Coming up on this edition of DMPS TV News, things will be heating up at Coles Montessori thanks to an Iowa State University student group, the district's middle school science fair continues to grow, and Park Avenue hosts an IB night showcase. Stay tuned for all of those stories and more. Hi and welcome to this edition. I'm your host, Aaron Hossman. Approximately 65 students from Dallas Center Grimes made a visit to Hoover High School. The Dallas Center Grimes students met with Hoover's Spirit Council and Student Council to share their perceptions of each other. And each DCG visitor shadowed a Hoover student as they attended their normal classes. The day ended with a debriefing in the library where the DCG students and Hoover students discussed how their perception had changed throughout the day. It was great to move from that, okay, what are your perceptions, going out and visiting the classes, coming back and sort of debriefing. And um, I'm just really proud of the kids um, and the work that they did this morning in leading those conversations. Students from Hoover plan to visit Dallas Center Grimes in the future to complete the exchange. The Iowa Department of Education released data on the four-year graduation rate for the class of 2012 and the five-year rate for the class of 2011. The class of 2012 at Des Moines Public Schools had a graduation rate of more than 79 percent, an increase of nearly 3.5 percent over the previous year, and the highest since Iowa began using its current graduation rate formula in 2009. The district is seeing increases in nearly every demographic. We spoke with M-Term Superintendent Tom Ahart about the increase. If you look at the four-year trends, we're trending in the right direction. And the most encouraging thing perhaps to me is that we've actually, um, not only have we improved in every single subgroup, um, we've also in most groups have reduced that gap between, the, um, between the, the highest performing group and those groups that have been lagging behind. So it, it appears as though we're hitting each group and getting success in each of those groups. So um, I would anticipate that probably not as dramatic as 3.5% or 3.9%, but I, I would anticipate us continuing to creep upwards toward that state average in coming years. Every year that we improve the graduation rate, the next step for improvement becomes that much more difficult um, because the challenges become greater. Um, I think it's important for people to understand that um, although we do have a learning services team um, headed by Bryce Amos, Jamie Gilley, and Ruth Wright, um, and they're, they're very instrumental in, in, in uh, seeing the improvements that we've seen. We have a lot of partners that make this happen, United Way and Aviva with our Reach Out to Dropouts um, event that's been taking place annually for the last three or four years. But also, you know, really the staff at all of our elementaries and our middle schools really set that tone for expectations for students. And we've greatly expanded in our middle schools opportunities for students to earn high school credit. So if they stumble a little bit their freshman year, which is pretty common around the country, they have a credit in their back pocket and that helps keep them stay, uh, helps them stay on track and um, gives them the confidence to know that they can be successful. So I'd like to recognize really a, a whole army of people who are responsible for helping these students see a greater rate of success than we've seen in recent years. Parents and students roam the hallways of Park Avenue Elementary School for the Passport to IB Night. Each grade level gave an IB related performance in the gymnasium for their proud audience. Students' work was showcased in each, in each classroom and artwork was displayed in the library. The difference that I'm seeing with IB uh, is just the engagement uh, in, in the classrooms. Uh, all the students are engaged all day uh, and very excited about their work. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, research uh, that, that our students are doing uh, and the students are driving a lot of their learning which uh, gets them involved. Young scientists and their families attended the 5th Annual DMPS Middle School Science Fair held at the Science Center of Iowa. The event continues to grow each year. As year one drew about 50 entries, this year boasted 134. There's a big push right now in Iowa for STEM education, um, looking at science, engineering, mathematics, and technology, and really integrating that into our educational system. Science Fair is the perfect opportunity for that. Students are able to communicate their findings. They're able to do individual research. Um, really follow and work like a scientist. All place winners are eligible to advance to the State of Iowa Science Fair in early April at Hilton Coliseum in Ames. Cole's Montessori students will grow vegetable starts from seeds in the school's greenhouse using solar energy and sustainable irrigation. Minds of Tomorrow is a student engineering group from Iowa State University 
which presented a grant and award ceremony for Coles Montessori. And we are so excited because we do uh, gardening and planting and, and lots of vegetables as well as flowers for our schoolyard. The $5,000 grant will provide funding to heat the school's greenhouse with solar energy, which will extend the growing season. Uh, the experience is great. The kids were very welcoming, and it's a great school. I think they definitely are working towards the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and we hope to get a lot of them at Iowa State. Kids author Ken Nesbitt spent a day at McKinley Elementary for students to sample his whimsical works. He read aloud to a sort of workshop where he and the students collaborated on an original poem in the school library. It's not so much at this age about getting them writing as much as it is to show them just how much fun they can have with the book. That you don't have to sit in front of the television and watch cartoons and play video games in order to have fun. That you can laugh just as much with a book. Nesbitt also appeared at Hillis Elementary and Capitalville Elementary. Find out more at poetryforkids.com. We'd also like to inform you of new programming that will air in the coming months. Additions include a monthly art show, a seasonal sports show, and featuring more student work in our film school show. We are excited for what's new to come, and we hope that you will tune in to our new shows on Mediacom and online. And on that note, we'll end this edition of DMPS TV News. I'm your host, Aaron Hossman. Thanks for watching.